This is the Add a Mite Pocket Calculator, probably from the 1950s. It's a little aluminum disc with a sliding arm. It's got markings from 0 to 99 around the edge of the circle and two windows for the answer. This knob over here helps to reset it, and that's about it. It's really small, and the design is really simple. And I've got all the original, original packaging, which is a lot of fun. Which is a lot of fun! This thing was made by Monogram of California, which is hard to find mention of today. If you search for their stuff online, you'll find a lot of printed novelty type stuff. Lots of cocktail napkins with funny stuff on them, some dish towels, that kind of stuff. Here's a series of napkin designs featuring Egbert. You remember Egbert, right? The wise cracking fetus from the 60s? Kind of tight squeeze to me. <laughs> it's not clear to me why Monogram would get into the adding machine business, but the packaging has lots of cutesy art, which seems just their style. I've got the original box and original instruction manual. The box has lots of random numbers on it, which is typical for adding machine boxes back in the day. The instructions are really great. I did a video a while back about the itemizer. It was a similar device that was marketed directly at women. The itemizer was really celebrating the emergence of women as independent economic entities. You know, smart, capable women who need a little adding machine because they're really going places in the world. This one is also meant to be used by women, but they took the exact opposite angle with the marketing. Women don't need this because they're smart and sophisticated. They need it because they're too dumb to be without it. It says this thing is a present for your wife. Let her spend what you intend. So this is a thing that a man gets for his shopaholic wife to keep her from wasting all of his hard-earned money. Basic idea is you use this thing while you're shopping to add up the amounts as you go so you don't end up spending too much. That sounds reasonable and lots of handheld machines were made for this purpose back then. But does anybody really need such a device? Nowadays most people have cell phones with calculators in them. It's really easy to add up stuff in the supermarket, but do people actually do that while they're shopping? I don't know. The instructions explain the thing pretty well. It's pretty easy to use anyway. When you want to add something, you start the arm at zero here. You press down on the arm and then turn it to the number you want to add. I'll do 15. And then you pull it back to the zero position. And then you just do that again to add in more numbers. So this here would look like this. And that's it really. The big window shows you the ones and tens digit of the answer, and the little window shows you the hundreds. Or more likely it's cents in the big window and dollars in the little one. The dollar amount goes all the way up to 24, so the maximum amount you can show is $24.99. The mechanism is really simple and almost everything is exposed so you can see exactly how it works. The back has a toothed wheel on it and the little arm has a bump on it that catches the teeth and drags the wheel when you pull the arm. When you push the arm down, the little bump won't catch the teeth anymore, so it doesn't drag the wheel. It's actually really simple. It's a fun little thing and pretty indestructible as far as I can tell. It doesn't have any springs or little moving parts or really much of anything at all that could break. So it's a great simple, durable design, but unfortunately it's not very pleasant to use. Look at this, I'm going to dial in the number 90. I have to turn this little arm counterclockwise almost all the way around, so how do I hold it? The best I can do is just go around a little bit and then reposition my hands and go around a little bit more and keep on moving around until I get to the 90. And you have to be pressing down this whole time so that it doesn't turn the gear, which makes it even harder. And then you have to come back to zero. On the way back, you don't have to be pressing down anymore, so that's a bit easier. But this time, the wheel on the back will be engaged with the arm, so the whole back surface of the machine will be turning too. That means you can't put one finger on the front and another on the back while you spin it, since your back finger will rotate while the front stays still. 
the instructions said to always hold it by the outer rim. That's not much better. For numbers less than 25, it feels great, but for bigger numbers, you're going to have to practice. Despite all that, I got to like the Atomite. It's small, it's mechanically simple, and it's pretty fun, although not particularly useful. But honestly, the most charming thing about this is the instructions. Look at the front. Keep your budget on the beam. And there's these straight lines like beams. Is on the beam some kind of thing that people say? Well, what does that have to do with the atomite? The thing is a circle. Why would you use that picture as if it relates to the machine? Why not use a bunch of circles and say, in the round? A beam is like the worst shape they could have possibly used. Like nothing about this is straight or beam-like at all. Who would have even come up with the idea of associating this machine with a beam? There's nothing beamy about it. It's not the beam just a...